and the floor is yours. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good morning, colleagues, and it's a pleasure to offer some insights and evidence from our work in Scotland to add to the weight of evidence that the Special Interest Group is taking forward. The context for our work in Scotland, I hope, is familiar to many. This is not the first time that it has been shared at this conference. Universal coverage with no co-payments and fairly unified primary and secondary care context. But at the, the point in time that we took forward this work, we were not horizontally integrated across health and social care. Similar challenges to many systems across the world with an aging population and a diminishing budget. And the burning platform that was developed was very much around a policy of reshaping care for older people towards home-based care, care that was personal and closer to home, and a realization that if we continued doing what we were doing, institutionalization was going to require an increase in um, emergency beds to the extent of opening a new district general hospital every three years, opening a new care home once every month. And that was not feasible, and it was certainly not desirable, and it was not what the older people of Scotland wanted. So we took forward a programme of reshaping care for older people, a transformation programme where we began to flip the paradigm, flip the pyramid with a focus on promoting well-being and building community capacity, supporting people to stay well and integrating health and social care and support. This was oiled by a 300 million change fund an innovation fund that was for four years. So I'm now presenting not the results at the end of the four years, but at the end of two years after the conclusion of the change fund. Are we holding the gains? One of the innovations was to shift the locus of care from hospital and institutional care setting towards more preventative, anticipatory care and community, and to shift the focus of care from reactive to much more preventative care, supported by a range of enabling actions around organisational development, workforce development, technology, finance, the, the, the usual strategic enablers of change. It was taken forward as an improvement programme where we were supporting change at the point of care and at delivery through an improvement network which was a cross-sectoral network, a network that brought together health, social care, housing, NGOs and independent provider partners from across the country. We focused on each of those pillars of the pathway on prevention and building community capacity, on supporting and strengthening the resilience of our informal and unpaid caregivers, and had a particular focus on the prevention of falls, recognising that that was an important evidence-based intervention for older people. We aligned work on anticipatory care planning, thinking ahead, personalised care plans that set treatment goals, and we linked that with work on pharmaceutical care and new models of um, realistic medicine to help reduce unwarranted and inappropriate polypharmacy. And we grounded this in the context of primary care, where we were promoting that interdisciplinary practice across the primary care team and extending the primary care team to include third sector partners, social care partners, and to provide continuity and coordination of care. And, and a shout out here for the World Health Organization practice brief on continuity and coordination of care with many global examples. 
We recognised that you could have a perfect system in primary and community services, but it all unravels in the evening and at weekends if there is no realistic menu of alternatives to hospital care when somebody's condition escalates. So we invested particularly in models of intermediate or transitional care that offered a rapid response to crisis or an early supported discharge or more recently what we describe as hospital at home services as well as step up, step down community beds. And finally, we invested systematically in programmes of improvement within hospital and care home settings as well, really working right across that care pathway with a particular focus on dementia, delirium and frailty. You can see here that the, the chart shows what we would have expected in terms of anticipated hospital bed use emergency hospital beds occupied by older people had we not changed. And we're able to see that beyond the conclusion of the change fund, we're still holding the gains in terms of every day in 2016-17, 1,500 older people not occupying an emergency hospital bed, 1,500 older people able to be supported at home. Importantly, not shifting from hospital to care home. This is the same graph showing the older people that were not occupying care home beds compared to what would have been expected had the age-related rate continued. Every day in 2017, 7,200 older people not in institutional care but being supported in their own home. When we put those statistics together, we, we, we see that older people in Scotland, by the two years after the conclusion of the change fund, were spending around 3.2 million more days at home. Quality time in their own home with their own family support. That equates to around 480 million per annum institutional care costs avoided not saved, but institutional care costs avoided and released to be able to invest in community services and support. We had a phrase at the beginning of this programme, we said, we have to big up the blue. We have to have more people who are not in receipt of formal statutory services, more people who are supported to live well with community and informal supports. And here you can see that, yes, we have achieved that over the, the period of the programme. Some of that progress has been achieved through the strategic use of technology to enable more assisted living and support at home. And here you can see a rise in the proportion of people in receipt of telecare who are not in receipt of social home care. The ability to continue to hold the gains beyond the end of the funding programme has really been enabled by the, the policy lever that was then pulled, the legislation to integrate health and social care across Scotland, and to do that not just for older people, but for adults. To use strategic commissioning and planning not um, just at a a partnership of health and social care, but also at a local population level to be able to invest in the services that are evidence-based and deliver the change. And delegating an integrated health and social care budget, which was available to the, the commissioners to commission the outcomes that matter to that local population. Over 60% of the adult and older people health and social care budget now delegated to the integrated authority to commission the services to deliver the change. Beginning to integrate our data to be able to track the changes in health and social care utilisation 
and integrating around a common patient identifier, a community health index for every citizen, which is now linked with social care data. And also now, more recently, levering change and continued improvement through a new GP contract, which is much more focused around person-centred, integrated care and coordination across that interdisciplinary team with everyone working at the top of their licence and the GP being the expert generalist in complex and chronic care. So I guess if we're looking back to where we've got to across the programme in Scotland, we've pretty much pulled the levers and enablers that are highlighted in the European Commission report from 2017, the, the blocks port report that identifies the strategic enablers of change in integrated care. Creating cross-government support, using funding as a catalyst for change, introducing both social and technological disruptive innovation, investing in prevention and community capacity building, particularly valuing the support of informal carers as full partners, a, a real relentless focus on place, home, community and outcomes that matter to people, and taking this forward through a learning and improvement culture. Tapping into the professional leadership, particularly in the primary care community and, and promoting interdisciplinary practice and distributed professional leadership. Using legislative levers to promote integrated strategic planning and integrated budgeting and then introducing some new contractual levers in more recent years. If you want to hear more about the programme and some of the outcomes, then here's some of the references that you can access. Or tap into our Integrated Care Matters webinar series, which is available on the IFIC website, and you'll get some examples of some real changes on the ground. Yes, I think we are beginning to hold the gains from reshaping care. I'm not entirely convinced that it's as yet full transformational change that is dramatic, irreversible, and is taking us to a position of financial sustainability. I think we still have some way to go yet for that. My own belief is that we need to face up to frailty to really get to that transformational change because not all older people are equal. And we now recognise that our frail older people are the population that we really need to, to tackle and get to, to grips with. And this is a bit of a shout out for the Face Up to Frailty workshop at lunchtime and also for the Advantage Joint Action presentation tomorrow where we're working across Europe to identify a roadmap to transformational change for frail older people. To really make the change and hold the gains, we absolutely have to get further upstream. We have to tackle frailty, but we have to create active and healthy ageing communities. And I think this graphic from Public Health England published this month really captures the essence of understanding the importance of social connectedness, meaning and purpose, resilience, and tackling loneliness and isolation, which are such a public health challenge to our society. And I guess my vision for the future in Scotland is to move beyond reshaping care, to continue to hold the gains, but to reach towards a decade of action on healthy ageing and to be part of the WHO global movement and to perhaps one day see Scotland being one of the blue zones in Europe and in the world. Thank you very much for, for the opportunity to share our work. No questions? No? Okay. Thank you. And thank